is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. The Dolphins didn't have any good, pretty much, except, well, you know what? I'll give the defense that first half yesterday. They did they did perform well, and they did show up for, for a half, actually, and did some, some good things there. But uh, rough one, ladies and gentlemen. This is one where it is, I, I mean, listen, it's not like any of us were expecting to see the light at the end of the tunnel after this game. I mean, really. The season was already over a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is just, you know, pounding on what is a terrible season, maybe the worst Dolphin coaching staff ever, which I'm going with that right now, actually. I think this is a, this is a worse coaching staff than Cam Cameron. And so, you know, uh, Cam Flo has, he has a lot to be proud of because really I never thought I would ever see worse coaching than I saw with Cam Cameron. I never thought I would see a worse environment than what I saw with Cam Cameron because after he suspended Tractor Trailer, uh, he lost that locker room, and that locker room just absolutely hated him because Tractor had been, you know, sacrificing his ass for a terrible team all year long, and, and uh, he, he wanted to suspend him and, like, send him home and stuff. And then, you know, the, the team revolted and then he reversed it and like made it only one game or something. But the damage was done at that point. And, you know, they just couldn't stand Cam Cameron. And, and so I, I'm just wondering, this is what's going on with Brian Flores. He has created a terrible environment in there. And we were seeing signs. You know, there were signs, but we didn't pay attention to the signs whether it's the Kenny Stills stuff, whether it's what went on with um, Chang Gailey, uh, the whole situation with Tua and Fitz last year, uh, all these different things that were happening that, you know, we kind of gave the coach the benefit of the doubt because the results were happening. Now that the results are nowhere in sight, the coach is no longer going to get that you know benefit of the doubt and that's the problem now and it just looks like it's a polluted environment and he has to settle for really weak coaches and he can't get any strong coaches and if there's something every new coach needs man they need help they need help they've got to get the right coaches they've got to be surrounded by the right coaches and they're not. And that's that's it. that's an enormous problem on this team. It is a a remedial coaching staff. It is a pathetic coaching staff. These are guys that have no business being in the NFL coaching. Maybe they should be assistant coaches, maybe they should be quality quality control coaches. They should be having secondary roles, learning the position that they're coaching at right now. You know, that that's th this is the problem right now with this team. None of these guys are real offensive and defensive coordinators, offensive line coaches. None of them have ever succeeded in any of this. You know, and I was having this conversation with Omar and he'll join us at 1030. And, you know, he was trying to make the point of that, that uh, Flo has coached all over, but Flo has never, never actually had success anywhere except as defense. So now Flo got rid of Chang Gailey, and that was a luxury for him because he didn't have to wor worry about the offense because Chang Gailey knows the offense. You know, in the end, listen, Everybody's going to fall on this sword, unfortunately. Whether it's Cam Flow, whether it's Greer, you know, everything that's going on right now, there's, it's just a disaster. Nothing is working out. And everything looks terrible from the picks to the players to the, the, the coaches to the schemes to the results to the environment. Everything, everything. It, it, it's, it's so weird how 
flow creates a dysfunctional offensive system. It, it would have been great if it was like it was supposed to be that one guy calls the plays and Charlie Fry can give him a tip on that play. Like, Hey, I see this or whatever, but if Charlie can change the play, then, you know, that, that whole collaboration bullshit, that that's just, that's just stupid. I mean, if Flo really thought a collaboration was the that was the right way, Flo has no business being a head coach. None. Zero. You know, and that's where that's kind of where I'm headed. I, I think towards the end of the year, for sure. I can already tell you, Flo's a guy that you know. I mean, there's nothing impressive right now about what's going on, and you can't go from where you were last year to where you are this year. And I don't know what he thought he was. If he thought he was going to be the Messiah for every position, he was able he was able to, you know, drop knowledge in every spot and fix every problem. And you know, I'll bring all of these young coaches along when really he should have had a veteran coach in all these spots so they can help bring him along. That's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to be the head coach and you're supposed to go out and get experienced coaches around you and then you learn from them in the process, right? And that's how you become a better head coach. Because you're young. You haven't done everything. You probably climbed up through the special teams ranks or the offense or the defense. So that's you have a, an expertise on one third of the, of the team. But you need to learn from the other two thirds. That's why you get experience. And you look at it special teams is failing, offense is failing, defense is failing. And why? Because now flow is probably stretched too thin, thinking he has to do everything and help out in every area and walk into the receiver's room and drop some knowledge and walk into the off offensive meetings and drop knowledge and walk into the linebacker room and the defense and special teams. And, and obviously the knowledge being dropped isn't very good. So it's a bad situation, man. It's a bad situation. 